Hey guys. Well, here we are at the G0602. In an earlier video, I talked about doing some upgrades to the G0602. The last time I had to run some parts, well, the last couple of times I had to run some parts, I was noticing that after running for a while, my x-axis would skip steps. It's really a big pain to have to reset your zero. The x is really uh, the most important axes when you're on a lathe. Uh, you can easily set your Z, but the X getting the diameter right and getting it dialed in, it takes a few minutes and whenever you skip steps it just completely messes everything up. So I had been wanting to upgrade to DMM servos, but that required me to make a new control box and I just didn't have the time for that. So I was trying to find something that's fairly simple to do an upgrade that didn't require you know, a week or so rewiring the whole control box. So what I did was I picked up these closed loop steppers here uh, to replace the faulty regular steppers. I mean, these have been on here for about five years, so they've worked fairly, fairly well, but um, they just weren't cutting it anymore. So I've got the X already installed and now I need to install the z-axis. This is a 1.2 newton meter. It's replacing a 175 ounce inch stepper. And then on the z I have a 475 ounce. And we're going to be replacing that with a 3 newton meter, which is about 425 ounce inch. So let's go into the shop here and I'll show you the differences between the drivers uh, for closed loop steppers and regular steppers. Now in an earlier video I talked about the two different types of closed loop steppers. This is an integrated type closed loop stepper and then this is the standard your external driver. Uh, you've got the two cables. With this one you eliminate all you have to have is your power and then your step and direction. Uh, the encoder feedback is actually internal so you don't really need uh, separate cabling for that. Although this is really nice feature, it's not going to be really good for uh, any applications where you're going to have flood coolant. Now on my z-axis on my lathe I could use this particular closed loop stepper uh, because it's going to be on the end and no coolant ever gets out there anyway. However, I wanted to keep keep them the same. You never know what's going to happen a few years down the road and trying to remember all this. Having them the same is just a lot easier. It's also a lot easier to do troubleshooting if you've got the same drivers, etc. So this particular integrated closed loop stepper is going to go on my ATC project. So now the difference between the drives, are they're pretty similar. You have your table here for your pulses per revolution pretty standard stuff uh, you've got your uh, your motor connection here your power and your motor connection that's the same you've got your enable your direction your pulse uh, you've got your alarm indicators here on the end those are pretty much the same um, with the servo you also have a an alarm you can have hooked up and you also have these encoder feedback. Another difference between the two is with the old standard stepper motors you chose what amperage the motors were with dip switches but on the closed loop you don't have to do that. There are a couple of different switches down here at the bottom your step in, uh, your motor direction you have a dip switch for that whereas on the original standard stepper motors you don't have that and also there's this an additional switch one here which says up edge or down edge I'm not exactly sure what that is to be honest with you so I just left it in the default um, setting. So for us all we have to do also you have the uh, 
another feature is your RS-232, so you could wire that in if you chose to uh, use RS-232 connections. But for us, we're just going to go with the standard features. Now, uh, I'm running default uh, half-step on my lathe. So I've got my dip switches set accordingly. Uh, I left switch 1, which is the up edge or down edge, I left that in the default off location. And 2, I left in off, and if I need to change the rotation, uh, once I get it on there, I can do it there. Or actually in Mach 3, you can just swap the rotation there. For the Z-axis, because we're not going to be running into any kind of flood coolant, I can just plug these directly into here. They'll be out of the way of any flood coolant. So I don't have to worry about that. On the X, what I did was I cut these ends off, I soldered these wires together, and uh, put shrink wrap around here to keep it uh, up and out of the way, so hopefully coolant won't get in there and cause me any issues. I looked, I unscrewed this cover to see if I could maybe just get rid of these pigtails altogether and bring the wire straight back into the motor like this. However, uh, the wires are directly on the motor and there is a little plug that goes onto the encoder and it's quite different than uh, these wires connections so I didn't want to mess with that. So for the X I just soldered them together and for these I'll just plug them in. So I do need to make these connections here. Uh, these are our power for the motor. Uh, pretty standard stuff, just like your conventional stepper motor. You've got A plus is black and A minus is green. So A plus is black and then green is A minus. So that's going to go like this. And then the red is B plus and the blue is B minus. So I just need to stick those into connectors like that. Then we have our power coming in here at the bottom. Uh, I've got to run this through the box actually before I can make this connection, so I'll do that when we get out to the machine. The encoder, uh, similar setup for the encoder. That are these chart right here. So we've got our PB plus is yellow, minus is green, so we got yellow, green. PA plus is blue, yellow, green, blue. Brown is our PA minus. And then our five volts is red, and ground is black. So, something like this. Green, yellow, blue, brown, red, black. Alright, so let's get out to the machine and uh, I'll go ahead and get this mounted and get it wired in. I'm going to make these connections for the motor and then I'll uh, We'll go ahead and do some testing and see the difference between a conventional stepper and then the closed loop. Now here's the Z-axis. Now all I could get out of these were 65 inches per minute. Which is really okay because it doesn't travel that much in the Z direction when you're running parts. The X it travels a lot more and a lot frequent more frequently. But when you've got to go across the whole bed it does take a little while to get there. Now let's get the new closed loop stepper hooked up and we'll see the difference in the sound and the rapids. 
All right, guys. Well, I've got the Z-axis closed loop stepper mounted. Fit right on there. Didn't have any issues with that. The shaft size for these closed loops are eight millimeters, and that was what the original stepper motor was. Uh, I've got it running exactly the same. I didn't change any of the parameters for the Z-axis, so I just wanted you to, before I change anything, you can hear it. I did have to swap the dip switch over, switch two for the direction to make sure, in order to get it to go the same direction, but that's 65 inches a minute, which is what it was originally set for. The X is running at 150. Which is about twice the speed I had before. So that's going to be really nice. I'm going to go into my configuration motor tuning. I'm going to select my Z axis. And you can see I've got the acceleration down real low to 5 and the velocity is at 64 inches per minute. So let's go ahead and just uh, bump this up. Let's go at least twice. So there's about twice. We can raise up our acceleration as well. Let's get a nice pyramid shape there about 25 that's five times the acceleration I had before all right let me test it okay you can see at 130 that's twice as fast as it was before So that's pretty good. So just for an upgrade to an existing system, if you're going to just upgrade to these closed loop steppers, wow, uh, very easy upgrade. The nice part about this is you don't even have to buy cabling. The cables that uh, came with the closed loop steppers, I think they're five meters three meters they're pretty long I would say at least 15 feet or so and uh, they were able to go from my closed loop stepper here and there's still some slack this table's about four feet so well there may be maybe they were ten feet or so but worked out really well you guys remember the box I can hear my fan on this power supply so it's probably getting a little old but you've got your green lights indicating everything's okay the red light will come on uh, you can trust me on that if it gets a fault condition so I was messing around with it earlier and got it to get to a fault condition but pretty straightforward I just disconnected my step and direction from my breakout board here uh, connected it into their plug and then ran my encoder wiring and ran my stepper motor and power wires. Yeah, really pretty happy with that. I've got, uh, I think I'll load up some sample G-code and then we'll run it and see what it looks like. I've got to put my cover back on my X-axis here and I should be good to go. I'm debating whether or not I should upgrade my little switches here. They seem to be working so far, but um, I don't know if they're really very accurate, so I think I definitely could upgrade those and get a little bit better accuracy. But, yeah, so far, pretty simple. Uh, total with the two closed-loop steppers for the X and the Y, the upgrade was about... 
$180. I think one of the stepper motors, closed loop steppers, was $87 and the other one was $100, something like that. So maybe $180, $190, less than $200 and you get the cables with it. So pretty uh, easy. It took me about, well, included video and it took me about three hours to do this upgrade. Uh, but yeah, pretty easy. Guys, if you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button down here below. That way when I post a new video, if it's something you're interested in, they'll send you a link and you can stop by and check it out. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, and leave comments. If you have any questions about these closed loop steppers, uh, you can leave a comment and I'll respond, or you can shoot me an email. Stop by the website if you're interested in plans for the G0602, the Precision Matthews 727, or the SIG X2 Mini Mill. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.